Hello everybody, welcome to my trying to get people into my live stream Friday night reading uh, It's from a book called Daft Wee Stories by a little Scottish guy But I will try not to be too Scottish Anyway, oh and by the way, if you are a vegetarian Switch off now The story is called Vegetarians This was a nice wee restaurant, thought Doug A nice place with nice people the staff seemed nice and so did the customers. They looked gentle. He looked at the menu and a few words jumped out at him that explained the niceness. Words like tofu, soya milk and bean burger. That's right, the place was vegetarian. Ah, fuck, whispered Doug to himself. He wasn't a vegetarian himself and he fancied something with a bit of substance. Something with a bit of meat. Like pasta with some chicken, or maybe a steak pie. He knew it wasn't right to think like that. At least, it didn't feel right in here. He always felt a bit guilty in places like this, and no wonder. He paid people to put animals in machines that tore them to pieces. Oh, dear God. And these good folk in the restaurant <laughs> didn't. He could always feel the guilt ooze out his pores like B.O. He looked all around at them. Wondering if anyone had noticed his disappointment at the menu or heard him say, ah, fuck, but nobody had. He knew really that none of them would care anyway. He knew nobody really objected to being in the company of a meat eater, except for Morrissey or whoever. But he wouldn't blame them if they did. After all, how is it acceptable for him to cut a slice of flesh off an animal's arse and then shove it in his mouth? How could he do such a thing? He loved animals, yet he had them killed. That was a bit Jekyll and Hyde, was it not? It didn't make sense. And it was probably the conclusion these folk around him came to a long time ago, when they decided to become vegetarians. It was such a logical, enlightened and kind-hearted decision. The decision to never kill again. The decision to love all living things and therefore not to kill any living thing. Except for lettuce, of course. Ha ha! That was funny. It was funny in that it was interesting. Doug paused for thought. He looked at the guy eating salad at the table nearby, a salad containing lettuce and tomatoes and other vegetables that used to be alive, but now weren't. That was funny now, that now that he thought about it, because it's not as if vegetarians don't kill anything. They do kill. They just don't kill animals. But they kill plants. And that's all right somehow. It's because plants are alive, but they're not alive like animals. Animals can think. They can feel. And that's what makes it wrong to kill them. Wrong in the eyes of vegetarians, that is. That's why the animals get to live and the plants have to die. Doug wondered if things would be different if vegetables could think and feel. Like, imagine if scientists worked out that tomatoes could count to ten. I'd imagine if, when a potato gets peeled, it hurts like fuck. It was a gruesome thought, but it made Doug smile. However, his smile drifted off when he wondered if vegetarians applied the same thinking to people. Specifically, if vegetarians are all right with killing something that doesn't think and feel, what about if that thing that doesn't think or feel is a person? You get people like that. And Doug couldn't think of why those unthinking and unfeeling people would be exempt from judgment. After all, is vegetarianism not based in some way on the belief that human life is no more important than any other kind of life? If so then why should human life be exempt from death, the same kind of death that befell every tomato, cucumber and carrot being scoffed by that guy at the next table? Duck's smile had turned into a full-blown scowl. He turned his head slowly and looked at the guy once more, looked him up and down, looked at his Thundercats t-shirt, his cross legs, his book. Such a harmless man perfectly harmless, unless, of course, 
If they are bequeath the required level of intelligence, one must demonstrate in order not to not be put to death. And who decides upon that level? The vegetarians, of course. It could be a minimum IQ they have in mind. It could be the size or shape of your head. It could maybe depend on the book you're reading. There's a thought. Or maybe you were walking down the street as a slate fell off a wonky roof above and right into your skull, putting you into an apparently unthinking, unfeeling state of being. Maybe you were born like that. Maybe, to the outside world, you're a motionless mute, but on the inside you have a vibrant, imagine, vibrant, imaginative world where you live in your own unique way. Well, I've got bad news for you. Here come the vegetarians, and I'm afraid you don't matter a fuck. Tongue stood up, nodding his seat back behind him until it tipped over and onto the floor. He didn't bother picking up, he just headed for the door. He couldn't bear another minute breathing the same air as these people. And as he walked out, he remembered a wee fact she once heard. Hitler was a vegetarian. As he glanced back at them all, he saw, as he saw them all sitting at the tables, their desks, deciding which lives should live and which should end, that fact didn't surprise him. Nope, it didn't surprise him at all.